presentation uh, will. No. Um, I, uh, I want to start by telling you about a really poignant moment in my life. Uh, it was about four years ago, and I was wa I was a I was a IT consultant for Ernst and Young back then, and I walked. I was walking. I was late, working late at night at a Fortune 50 company, as most consultants do, working late, late into the night. You know, getting up early, coming there early. I was working long hours there, and I walked down the hall, and all of a sudden I'm feeling like this kind of a wind of warm air, and so I turn the corner, and there's this door propped open that has a sign on it that says, do not close this door, the servers will melt. And so I, I turned into the room, which is of course the source of all this heat, and I look under the desk, and there's six or seven uh, 1U rackable servers sitting there under the desk, piled on top of each other. And all the wires were coming out in what looked like a, you know, a, a hub that you would buy from Best Buy or Amazon. And uh, it was, it was and it, uh, everything plugged into a single power strip that was sitting there on the floor. So I was curious about this. I'm like, what could be on these servers? And so the next day I went back and I walked in and went to this random person and just said, hey, just curious to know, like, what, what, what's on those servers? And what would happen if, the, if the shut, someone shut the door? And he goes, well, the servers have a bunch of databases that I built for the North America sales team. And I go, oh, North America sales team. Interesting. I'm thinking like customer relationship management. I don't know, sales data? I don't know what's on here. So what happens if the door, sh the door closes? And he kind of looks at me and looks at the servers and goes, I guess I get fired. <laughs> and so. Um, it was, it, was that, it was that point when I thought, wow, the, something, the, the, the cloud really could make this whole thing better. In fact, if you look at the SANS top 20 critical security controls, uh, it has number one, it says, uh, obtain an, you know, obtaining a list of authorized and unauthorized devices in the environment. So I thought, well, maybe this Fortune 50 company is not alone. There's a lot of companies out there with, uh, with some IT governance uh, issues. Anyway, I'm Chad Wolf. I'm the Director of uh, Risk and Compliance for AWS. I, uh, I've been uh, an IT consultant, an IT auditor, a security pr uh, product manager in the past, and now I work with our customers uh, every day to help them be innovative in compliance in AWS. Yes, innovation can be uh, said in the same sentence as compliance because we see that every day. Every day I get to work with a wide range of customers that are, are really solving the problem of antiquated regulations translated to a cloud environment. And every day, we, my, me and my team get to work directly with these customers to help figure that out and get a better governance structure in, uh, in AWS than they maybe could on premise. Today, I, I want to talk about uh, a few things. Number one, I want to talk about how our platform, uh, 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 how, how, how you can become, you can manage a more secure environment in AWS. I want to talk a little bit about the scaling uh, benefits of security in the cloud, you know, the same benefits that, uh, of security, uh, of, of scale, of cost, of uh, agility, all those things apply to security in, and in compliance in the cloud. And uh, I know you've heard a lot about this and everyone's been talking about in the keynotes and other, other com conference address, com addresses here that there are a lot of things you can do, but I'm going to give you some specific resources that you can bring home to uh, your teams back home. And I know, you know, the, the risk and compliance guys, they don't, they don't really get to come to these conferences, right? You, you, you guys that are working in IT are like, hey, you guys just stay home. We'll, I'll, I'll handle this uh, AWS conference. And uh, so I'm going to give you some, uh, some resources to take back to the teams uh, at home. 
All right, so this, uh, I, I, I've been doing a lot of res looking at the, the research and the uh, independent analysts that have, been, that have been writing about the cloud. Here's a paper that's called The Security Cloud Revolution is Upon Us, published by Forrester Research in August. And this particular paper really goes into a lot about how the cloud is disrupting the security market, disrupting the security practices and disrupting the security, uh, uh, traditional security vendors and products. So it says, this is the, actually the closing line of this whole report. We'll also see organizations adopt cloud services for the improved security protections and compliance controls that they otherwise could not provide as efficiently or effectively themselves. I could not agree more with this statement. We have had a really great year at AWS in being really innovative in what we're providing you, and I think, I think it's a good demonstration of exactly how this is possible in, uh, in, in AWS. So you'll hear this from me. You'll hear this from many other people. You heard it from Steve Schmidt if you went to the, the security keynote. Uh, you heard it from Andy uh, in, the, uh, in the overall keynote that security in AWS can be better for, you, know, you, have be you can have better IT security in AWS than you can uh, using traditional, uh, traditional methods of IT man of sec managing security. That's possible for two reasons. Number one, the platform itself is secure. So AWS, it's no secret that we, uh, we, we invest a lot in security. It's kind of like uh, a car manufacturer. Car manufacturer, invests a lot in the safety of its vehicles because they have to accommodate for a wide range of driving conditions and, and, and scenarios. So they invest a lot in security, I mean safety. Uh, they test it, and they know that when they test it, everybody's going to, going to see what the test results are because the test results are public. So they invest a lot in it. They want to be known as a safe car company, and the car that the safety results are published to see if it meets or exceeds uh, safety standards. So the same thing happens in AWS around security. We invest an enormous amount in the security of our platform, and we, uh, we do it at a level that meets the bar of all of our customers. So think about that. We have to invest so much in this, in this space that it meets not just a specific workload or a specific requirement, which is usually what companies build to. They build to whatever security requirements they require for that specific workload. Instead, we say, okay, every single customer in the world has all kinds of different workloads. We have to build our environment to meet the security bar of all those customers. So, of course, we invest heavily. Andy and Steve also talked about uh, the, the different certifications that we have. Uh, we, uh, I won't go over all of them, but the, another key idea here is that we're providing a tremendous amount of transparency to you and your teams about how we're operating our security. Now, when you, many of you maybe know about a PCI, a PCI audit. How many here have been involved with the PCI audit before? Okay, many of you. Um, in my years of consulting, I know that many times customer, or you know, my clients would get ready for a PCI audit. They'd, they'd, know the, uh, they'd know all the controls. Here comes the point in time audit. It's coming. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to um, maybe shore up my documentation, get it ready, and then the auditor comes in. You take them through the audit, and you pass, and you kind of say, phew, see you next year. 
Good thing we passed that audit. We, we, don't, have, we don't have that luxury at, at uh, AWS, nor do we operate that way. We are ready for an audit at any time of the year because all these audits are all staggered. They come in at different times, and they're all with a, di a, a different perspective. PCI is a point in time for those specific controls documented in PCI DSS. Then there's uh, our SOC controls, where Ernst & Young comes in, they, uh, they, they, they do an audit of how the controls have been operating for a period in time rather than a point in time. And then, um, you know, our Varus uh, comes in and does our FedRAMP audit, and that's, that's a, a, a very comprehensive audit with different controls based on the NIST 853 standard. And with that, there's continuous monitoring requirements. So by the time you're done with all of these different kinds of audits and all these different controls and the different, the different nature of the audits, you can triangulate as a customer and really get a great idea about how we're operating our controls. It's not just one, one dimension, it's three dimensions of, of how we operate uh, security and control in AWS. So this is a, a really uh, key idea in that we are providing a very highly secure environment that meets all these demands of likely more than any one customer would require. And then uh, we provide that as, as uh, the reports and documents to our customers to be able to see what we're doing and how we're operating. So that's the, the first reason how you can be more secure in AWS is that the platform itself is secure. Every customer who uses AWS inherits the entire platform, uh, the, the security of the entire platform, and uh, you don't pay extra for it, it's just part of the service. The second reason you can be more secure, and uh, this is, this sounds obvious, I think, but I think from the, the risk and compliance community is, is just now understanding this, and that is, the security features we provide in our products, the, the, the features you control are advanced security features. Um, we had a, uh, uh, well, first I'll, I'll talk about this, uh, this uh, auditor. This, we, we had a regulator come into our environment, and they, uh, the, a bank was, you know, using AWS. They went, they went to go audit the bank, and the bank said, um, yes, I am using AWS for, for doing archiving and, and backup and recovery. So they came to us and did a review of AWS. And they said, at the end, after uh, we frankly blew them away with our control framework and all the documentation that we have and all the validation that we, we perform, the, the regulator was like, that sounds, that sounds great, Chad. I'm really feeling good about AWS, but also, I understand the responsibility model of our cu your customers have a lot of control and a lot of options on what they use and how they, uh, how the, how, how they manage security in, in the cloud. And we said, absolutely, they, they, they have a lot of capability there. And he asked, well, how do I know that my bank is using AWS in a way that's secure? So, um, it's, it's really no secret that AWS innovates at an astounding rate. Today, Andy Jassy talked a lot about all the new features. He cited, I think, 234 uh, new features coming out in, the, in this, this coming year. And I went back and looked at all those releases, and a good 25% of them are either security features, like an IAM feature or the SAML, uh, you know, compatibility feature or something related specifically to security, or it otherwise furthers your ability to manage security in AWS. We provide a, a, a different range of control types of security enablement features, and I've separated it into these three uh, buckets. The first one is cross-service controls. So we have some controls, some 
security features that go across all of AWS. Think about uh, multi-factor authentication. The, uh, this IAM feature, uh, when enabled, uh, requires anybody that accesses any service in AWS, it requires multi-factor authentication. So that's a good example of a, uh, of a cross-service control, something you can implement that improves the security of whatever's in AWS. The second one is a cross, uh, is a service specific control. So you might consider um, S3 server side encryption a service specific control because it only applies to S3 and it does something very specific and unique. It encrypts all the data in S3. And as you, uh, as you uh, think about all the little features that uh, are, you know, come with each of, each of the services that we provide, there are features uh, that'll help you improve security and SSE, uh, server-side encryption is one of them. And then the top layer, there's, there's controls that you already, you have to manage anyway that are optimized by AWS, such as um, uh, doing, like creating a, a gold image, a machine image. Uh, you can create a private uh, machine image that is configured in a way that's compliant with whatever policies and security requirements you have. And then you can require that the, uh, every time anyone spins up an instance that they use that image. And then you could use legacy tools to, to then patch and manage that environment. But this is something that's, that helps you by uh, enabling the traditional, traditional processes and the traditional uh, parts of the responsibility model that you, the customer has. So overall, if you take this, uh, take this model and think about how you're going to create a governance structure, you could look at them in this way, evaluate them in this way, automate, uh, uh, audit to them in this way. The, the great thing about this, and I think what, what the, secu the security and compliance community is, com is, is coming to grips with, is that this provides true automated, centralized control. It's controlled by software. It doesn't rely on best intentions. It doesn't rely on manual processes and checks. It doesn't rely on, uh, you, know, uh, you know, populations of, of data and validating that manual, contr manual controls or manual processes are working. It's true automated centralized control that if you're familiar with auditing uh, techniques, you could just automate the controls or a test of one. You know, you just do one test, validate that the, the, soft, the software control or the automated control is working, and then there's no need to get a population uh, and audit it because every single, the results of every single item in that population would be uh, similar to the, the test of one. So um, this is something we're seeing customer, and I think everybody who's been in the security field knows that automated controls are much better than manual controls. And there's been efforts in the past two decades of people moving, companies moving their, uh, their controls from being manual, labor intensive, audit intensive, to automated, and this enables that. So we're getting to the enablers. So these are the things that, uh, uh, you, you know, you may be asking, well, you know, that sounds great. You've given me some examples, but what about getting a good high level view of everything that I can do and everything I need to know to create this, uh, this, this governance environment in AWS. So the first thing, uh, the, probably the, the number one thing that you will want to bring back, back home is this new white paper called Governance in AWS. I'm gonna talk about this in a minute. Um, that's the high level overview of tying in traditional security challenges to the features that uh, that AWS provides. AWS security best practices. This is a new, also a new white paper. It's the first of its kind that we go in, in depth on how to implement all the range of security features that AWS has in your environment. I mean, in the past, there's been reference architecture, there's been you know, conceptual models, there's been um, case studies on, on some specific things that uh, some companies have done, but you would have to go to a solutions architect 
to really understand how to implement it in AWS, unless you're really familiar with the, with the platform. So this AWS security best practices document, by the way, has been like reviewed a million times. It's, it's, I think it's at a 30-month you know, review cycle. It's everybody in the company who has this expertise has chimed in on this. So the security, the security uh, best practices doc is, is a really valuable resource. Uh, the aud AWS auditing security checklist, this is, this is the document we developed in response to that regulator asking us, how do I know my company is using or a company is using AWS in a secure way. So that's that document. It's a way to go through and do validation checks. And if you're not completely familiar with AWS, you don't know the technology extremely well, but you do understand traditional audit methodology, this document will, do it, will, will allow you to take a traditional methodology and move it through to a, a, an effective audit. And then there, we have an AWS risk and compliance white paper that really goes through all the risks of cloud computing and addresses them uh, specifically for AWS. Uh, the second thing I'm going to talk about more detail in a bit is the AWS Compliance Forum, which is a group of compliance professionals working together uh, to solve uh, compliance issues. And then the AWS Trusted Advisor product is a, is a really cool tool that uh, gives some uh, visualization and, and easy, uh, easy ways to um, identify kind of the low-hanging fruit of things you need to go check. So I'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. All right. So I'm going to talk about this one white paper that we have. And I, we, when I thought about reInvent months ago, I thought the one thing that was probably missing from reInvent in, in many of the talks is, um, especially the general talks, is you, know, you might be told, well, you, know, you, can, you can go and create a more secure environment. You can use, uh, use our features to uh, be more secure. But for someone who doesn't understand all that architecture and doesn't understand uh, you know, how to build the environment, they just want to audit it or they want to govern it, which there are a lot of, a lot of uh, stakeholders in the company that isn't down to that detail of running instances and supporting IT, but they want to make sure that it's managed well. So this document, that, that's its purpose. For each of these domains, so we, we, we broke them out into 10 domains, kind of tried to glean from the major uh, security frameworks to, to make these, these domains, plus added you know, financial control because that, that's an area of IT governance that uh, we can provide as well. And for each one of these, we go into the traditional challenges or the traditional objectives of, say, IT asset identification, list all the features that AWS provides in like a table, and and uh, how they can help you manage that domain better, and then goes into some specific links about how, you know, where to go for more information about that specific function. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through a couple examples here. Um, number one, number eight, uh, number eight uh, domain eight was uh, security logging and monitoring. So, of course, centralized, using, centralized logging of user actions taken against some IT resources is something that basically we all know we either have to do or we should be doing. And the, tra the, the challenge with that traditionally is that you know, you've got all these disparate systems. You may be great at logging certain systems, but maybe not others. And if you don't have a, a full understanding of where all your IT is, then logging is impossible. I mean, think about I, I keep thinking back at that, uh, that example of when I was walking through and saw those servers. There's so many control violations and, and uh, policy violations and risks that, that that poses. Those servers go down and the CRM database for North America sales goes down uh, or there's some personal identifiable information in there of customers uh, and that goes down. I'm not sure, you know, you can think of all the different things that could go, that, that would, that would, that would, uh, uh, you know, how many problems that would make. So, uh, ce the centralized logging of, uh, is, is made possible today, and one, one of the items, there's many things on this list in the white paper, but one of them is AWS CloudTrail. That was announced today, and CloudTrail is a really easy and streamlined way to log everything that happens in your environment. You wanna know who 
took down five servers over the weekend, you know, uh, or, or understand who's changing security policy. Um, you, you really, uh, AWS has always been positioned well to be able to get comprehensive logs for this. So now with CloudTrail, we're very happy to announce that this is available. Right here you're seeing a, uh, a Splunk uh, output uh, a visualization of the logs, because we've been just the logs themselves, the, the data, and then there's several, uh, you know, outside tools that it, this integrates with. So this is Splunk. And it visualizes some of the actions that are going on. You can narrow down the actions by what, you, what kind of actions you care about. And with any of the tools, you can visualize some of the activities that are go going on that you can then understand and know about what's going on in your whole environment. Now, so think about, it, it maybe underestimated the power of this, of saying that the entire AWS environment for those, those major services that, that CloudTrail supports, anything that happens, you have some accountability and logging for. That's very difficult to do on, on prem or in a traditional environment. OK, the, uh, the second one here, disaster recovery, is my favorite topic in AWS, because there's just so many enablers for disaster recovery. I used to do disaster recovery uh, in, in doing when I was doing consulting. And it's just painful. Like, I don't ever, I don't think I ever, ever saw a company that, after doing their extensive backups and all their tapes, could actually recover a production transaction database from their backups. I've just never seen it. I've never seen a company that could actually do it. They you know they, they're, they're great at making sure they're checking the box of shipping all these huge tapes to Iron Mountain or, or wherever. Uh, they were doing a great, a great uh, job at cataloging those and making sure where they are. But if something actually crashes, they just, they just weren't able to recover. So um, EBS snapshots. Now, this is, a, this is a, a great way to get point in time, full volume copies of the EBS data. So, this is something that can be scheduled. You can do this through the, the console. You can do it through API. But creating a snapshot and putting it to S3, extremely durable storage, uh, you could do that every five minutes. You could do it every 15, you know, however, however often you need, every 10 minutes, every hour, every day. Uh, you can then have them expire uh, automatically so you're not like encumbering a, a huge amount of storage. This is a great way to easily take transaction data or a bunch of data that's, that's sitting on a server and copying it over for immediate access if need be. I think this, this, this creates a, a, a capability of disaster recovery that's, uh, that's much higher than, than uh, what I've seen. So going back to this, there's the, there's the, ten, the 10 categories here, the 10 domains for each one of these we go into those, those key elements. Now, if you're going to bring anything back seriously, this is the document you bring back and hand to the risk and compliance teams, the audit teams, because then you can take this document and get familiar with what, this, what the features do and how they relate to an IT governance environment. I think that's one key piece that's always been missing is all these great features that we're releasing, which are fantastic, and the IT ops guys are just getting all excited about but how does it relate to actually governing the environment from a high level view? So a very, very, very good doc. I'm very excited about it. The whole point here is to do something that is very, uh, is, do something that is very um, advanced. And that is creating, using all these features, creating a container, an environment where Non-compliance is impossible for certain controls. You, can't, you cannot violate the policies and controls that you've established in a container like this. And then you can let your IT operations and development teams go crazy. Because you know what? That's what all the risk professionals are worried about. All the IT, uh, all the IT guys going crazy. And, and doing all kinds of things that they don't know about and they don't want to handle it in their audits. Well, creating this container that's secure by default or compliant by default, when done right, allows you to scale 
whatever you're putting in there in a way that meets all the IT governance and all the control requirements. And then it ends up being extremely visible of what's going on. It becomes testable and becomes a centralized, scalable control environment. All right, the next enabler we have for you besides documents, even though documents are my favorite uh, enabler, you know, coming from risk and compliance, we have the AWS Compliance Forum. So this is a, uh, we, we have a client advisor, a customer advisory board that gives us feedback on uh, what kind of things they'd like to see. And we had a special group of these, uh, these uh, CAB members that came in and said, you know, Amazon, you're in a great position to facilitate a lot of customer to customer conversations about compliance. Like the, the, the CAB members there were saying, I know I'm not the only one in the boat of trying to figure this stuff out. I know that there's my peers and maybe related fields that are trying to solve the same problems I'm solving. I don't want to be the only one solving these problems. Can't you broker a conversation between my peers? And that's exactly what this is. This is a forum, it's a discussion forum, it's not an online forum, uh, you know, text-based online forum, but it's a discussion forum you can join that we will give you a few things. First, there's uh, discussions with people in your industry um, and size, and you could talk about uh, how, you know, how you're handling certain challenges. This is very useful for us because we are looking to provide enablers, documents, certifications, things that will enable you customers to be successful. That's the first thing. The second thing is we're developing, based on these conversations and other conversations we have with our customers, we're developing a lot of cool documents that we're frankly not releasing to everyone because they're so specialized. So for example, we've got some documents that are uh, facilitate a U.S. government agency to quickly comply with FISMA or DIACAP by using our documentation. So it kind of says, you know, here's what we provide as a template and how to fill out your documentation. And it makes it a lot faster for an, a government agency to then, uh, you know, finish their documentation and get, uh, get compliant, get it signed off. So uh, we also have an FFIEC examiner's workbook, a, a document that could be used by an FFIEC a regulator to go in and audit their financial entity that's using AWS. And lucky for you, it also has uh, indications on what to do to get ready for that audit, you know, what validation you, you can do to get ready for that kind of review. So these kind of documents we have, and we also have um, you know, part of our PCI compliance workbook, uh, or PCI compliance package, uh, it has, it, it has um, uh, some, doc some documentation around responsibilities for every single one of the DSS controls. We can talk, we talk about that. Uh, we do education sessions around this kind of thing. So that's, a, that's another one of the things we do uh, in the AWS Compliance Forum. Uh, we hope in the future to be able to bring in uh, uh, possibly regulators to talk about the policy and things they're doing to change, uh, about, uh, ch change their approach on handling cloud and things like that. So this forum, it's, it's pretty new. It's been kind of in private beta until today, or last week we posted it on our, on our security blog. And you can join simply um, email awscompliance at amazon.com, and we'll get, you, uh, we'll get you set up. OK, uh, the governance, uh, a cool governance tool. Uh, Trusted Advisor. Anybody here have premium level support and uh, have used Trusted Advisor? OK, so not many. Trusted Advisor is a, it's a great way that, I mean, it's a tool that analyzes your environment. So the things that can be analyzed by uh, the metrics or things coming out of your environment, such as ports open or uh, utilization or things, things like that, the Trusted Advisor will present to the customer opportunities for improvement, such as how to save money on underutilized resources, or if re buying reserved instances would be, 
would uh, create a, a better advantage for you because you've been running uh, uh, you've been running instances for a number of months. Uh, there's security the security checks like this certain port is open and you know that it it, it typically this isn't open and it has, there's some vulnerabilities associated with this port so you might want to look into closing that closing that port. So there's some security things and fault tolerance fault tolerance uh, things about you know you're you're isolated in one region and you might want to dis distribute some of uh, some of your IT in different regions for for uh, fault tolerance and uh, and redundancy um, and performance. Like if there's overutilized resources or things you could do to uh, increase the performance of your environment. Uh, this is a this is a great tool and a great win for customers because, as Andy Andy mentioned this in his talk, we've had over 10,000 customers who have used Trusted Advisor and. They reviewed 700,000 recommendations. I mean, that's how many we're cranking out and telling our customers, being proactive with our customers about how to better their environment. And the actions taken by our customers represent $140 million in annualized savings. And we don't even measure the, the improvements in security because uh, you know, we don't follow up on the recommendations for those, but at least the, the cost savings ones we do, we do track. So this is a great, a great tool, especially if you literally know nothing about AWS or the environment. If you're, just, if you're showing up as a, as, a, as a stakeholder in the company and you just want to understand in general how things are operating, this is a great way to do it. You don't need to know anything about uh, IT, uh, you don't need to know anything about building servers or load balancing, but as you look into some of the things that might be of concern, you could then follow up and uh, get more information from your, from your teams. All right, so there's a few customers that I want to talk about uh, because uh, these, uh, the customers are, are doing some really cool things, some innovative things on AWS and really uh, doing things that uh, haven't been done before. And in fact, there's, if there's, a, there's a case study uh, web page that I'll give you a link to at the end of this presentation that has like all kinds of case studies. And you know, I, I, maybe it's just me, but I just get all geeked up going through that list, thinking of all the cool stuff that, that customers are doing on a AWS and being innovative. So the first one, I want to talk about Pegasystems. Pegasystems, they provide a, a platform, uh, kind of like a platform as a service or, or software as a service for uh, case management and uh, business processes and uh, customer relationship management. The, challenge they had was that some of the customers were putting HIPAA regulated data in their environment. Of course, you've got, if you're, if you're managing business processes and, and customer relationship management and cases on, uh, you know, case management on your, uh, in your environment, of course, there's going to be some personal health information there or some, some kind of HIPAA regulated data or processes in there. So their challenge was, well, we can't just we can't just offer up this without being able to accommodate that. So they came to AWS, signed a business associate agreement with us, and did the things that they need to do on top of the things that we already do to support HIPAA compliance and made it so their entire platform is able to handle HIPAA regulated data. So this is a great example of them, them solving a, a, a a problem for their entire customer base and making an environment that is uh, compliant, uh, compliant, compliant for with HIPAA. Uh, Nasdaq FinCloud. Now we've we've talked about this uh, many other times, and it's because it is such a fantastic um, uh, example of a company that's been innovative in the compliance space. So. If you don't know about broker-dealers, broker-dealers, especially after the 2008 recession, the, a lot of legislation has been coming down on their heads about documentation, retention of documentation, retention of, of uh, financial, any kind of financial records and transactions. One of, the, one of the problems with this whole industry is that they've, they're getting more regulations and more, uh, more legislation piled on them than they can respond to without completely going bankrupt. I mean, just if they were to go out and comply with everything, they would just be you know, a disaster because they wouldn't be able to function as a business. 
So this industry actually plays a, a game of regulation roulette in that they, they, they have to do a risk assessment on what they can comply with and what they, what they can't. So um, the, the, the requirements around storing these transactions are that you have to put them in an environment that is write once and read only, and it can't be deleted. Like you, you can't have the ability to delete the data. Now, in AWS, the root user always has the ability to delete data. So what they did was they created this, built on AWS, an environment where the root pass key is put in a safe with a third party to make sure that nobody can actually delete the data and all the, the policies around the, how they manage the data makes it so they cannot delete it. And it's actually better than the on-prem uh, solutions because on-prem solutions, besides being extremely expensive, you know, they go buy this server that's, that's specific for SEC 17A4 compliance and it costs quadruple what they would normally pay for a, a tower of, 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 um, of storage. Besides that, someone could always take an ax to that, but nobody's gonna come in the AWS data centers with an ax and, uh, and take out the physical, uh, physical hardware. So it's actually more secure and costs way less, besides being uh, not having to buy that, that specialized hardware, it's in AWS, which is, uh, is, is cheap storage with um, you know, price reductions going on as a, as a regular uh, way we operate business. So this is a very exciting thing that I think that uh, was, was, a, was creative. It was, it's a simple, elegant design that allows them to comply with a, a big, uh, a big uh, regulatory uh, requirement. Okay, uh, the last one I wanna talk about is Cognia. Cognia is a, a communications platform, like a, a call platform, and some of their customers were using this platform to transact PCI, you know, car, credit card uh, information. So they had to get the whole platform PCI compliant. And that's what they did on AWS. They used, they leveraged our PCI uh, compliance that we do with Coal Fire, uh, and they used that to get their own assessment done. And they were able to use our tools and our uh, capabilities there to create this uh, compliant environment. So this is another example of, of allowing all their customers now to be doing business in a PCI uh, compliant environment. Okay, so going back to that original quote from Forrester, it says the cloud providers would provide a security capability and a you know, security and compliance capability that the companies could not efficiently or effectively perform themselves. And we can see it now in the security of our platform. We have a very secure environment that's audited, tested, and very transparent. We provide you with the functions and features and, and services that you need to create a centralized control environment that's automated, that's visible to your in, entire org, and, more, and, and testable. You can prove security in the cloud much easier than you can uh, in, in some traditional environments. And this environment is now built so you're secure by default, meaning you can scale all you want and you still have all the security controls applied in, this, in, your, in, your, in your AWS environment. Okay, a couple resource links and then I'm gonna leave 10 minutes for questions. Uh, these are the compliance site. Again, you can go here, get the Get, look at a list of audit reports. If you saw all those icons of all the audits we do, you can go there and read them all. Uh, and you can get the white papers, the new uh, governance white paper. Uh, there's also another white paper on there um, about logging. So we, we talk about CloudTrail and how logging capabilities for all different kinds of security and compliance reg regimes can be met by uh, CloudTrail. So there's another white paper there, so go there. The AWS Security Center 
If you want to know more about how we manage our security on the, on the platform level, there's a whole white paper on all that, like all of our internal processes, everything that supports the reports that we, we issue. Uh, the AWS Security Blog is a great resource to receive uh, the news, any kind of uh, cool how-to guides on doing sp specific things. The IAM team, Identity and Access Management team, post, regularly post things that you can do to better your, your security environment. We do compliance-related um, announcements there of new reports or, or something new that's come out, new capabilities. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good resource. AWS Trusted Advisor, again, for those with uh, premium level support or business level support, you can, you can have that now in your environment. You just uh, simply need to go uh, view it in AWS. And then the case studies, like I was saying, it's really interesting to see what people are doing all over the world in AWS to, to create not only an innovative and, and, uh, uh, an in innovative and, and a new business models in AWS, but also a very secure and compliant one, handling, handling major security and compliance issues. Uh, there's the link there for all of the case studies. Some recommended sessions. Intrusion detection in the cloud. This is, there's some really cool things that the secure, this is the AWS security team. Don Bailey is, is leading this session and they're thinking up some really crazy awesome things to do with intrusion detection in the cloud. I recommend that one. Uh, there's others here, building secure application and navigating FedRAMP. Unfortunately, that's going on right now, so you'd have to leave now and run over there to, uh, to hear that one. Um, but you can always see these on, on video later. Uh, architecting for end-to-end -end security in the enterprise. That will, that will be talking about the security best practices doc and talking about how to architect that secure container that's, that's compliant by default. Uh, and very interesting there. Implementing a bulletproof HIPAA solutions on AWS. This is uh, one of our uh, customers that's presenting here on what they did. So if you want to hear more about, you know, from customers themselves on what they did, go to that session. Uh, taking the fear out of PCI DSS in compliance in the cloud. Also a customer, uh, Payment Spring, who, who did something similar the, to in their environment as Cogni did. Using, using AWS Enterprise support to the fullest. That one we'll talk about uh, Trusted Advisor. They're going to do a demo for that one as well. So if you want to see Trusted Advisor in action, you can go to that one. And then overview of uh, AWS Identity Access Management. That is also right now. <laughs> so make sure you look that one up uh, when you go watch the videos afterwards. Oh, also there's a Come Talk, to, Come Talk Security with AWS event. This is happening between 4 to 6 p.m. on Thursday in Toscana 3605. So if you want to just come talk to, I'll be there, my team will be there, uh, you can come talk to us uh, about anything related to uh, security compliance. All right, please give feedback. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming and have a, uh, have a great time at reInvent. Um,